Hi there, my name is Ernest and welcome to another lesson in Christian morality. Today we'll be talking about authentic human freedom. But before we start, don't forget to and like and subscribe to this yeah. channel. Like and subscribe and down the like button here below. What is freedom? Here are some few people who will try to answer that question. Freedom is doing what you want. For me, freedom is to pursue your dreams in the future. Like for me, I want to become a rich person and to express myself in riding, in biking, in any type of sports that I want to do. So there's no one to stop me on what I want to do in the future. So freedom is free, free to you to do anything you want in the earth. Freedom is not just being able to do what you want. Freedom is being able to see the world clearly, to think for yourself, to decide conscientiously, and to make choices. Choices that will hopefully allow others to see, think, decide, and make choices just as you can. There are certain elements to freedom, and let's look at the two most important elements in freedom. First is reason, followed by will. <coughs> What is reason and what is will? When we speak of reason, it's our intellectual capacity to decide for ourselves or to be conscious around the world. <clears throat> While will is the innate capacity or innate desire in us to, to seek out what is good. Let me elaborate on that. Suppose I'm strolling in a park and I got hungry. I have the option to eat either a red corner or a shakies. At that time, I want to eat buffalo wings and burger and fries. And definitely, I would go to Red Corner. Look at the two things involved there in making my decision going to Red Corner. It is because of my desire to eat buffalo wings and burger that led me to eating at Red Corner. And because I know I have this knowledge that Red Corner has amazing buffalo wings and burger that led me to go to Red Corner. Freedom requires that we have the will, that desire, and then second, the intellect, the knowledge of our actions. Intellect and will is indispensable in the discussion about freedom. Without this two, one could not consider ourselves free. I want to focus on the reality called will. What is will? It is a desire to towards a certain good. Our will is always directed towards the good. For example, I am hungry. That's why I will food. I desire food. So food is actually good for me because I'm hungry. The assumption there is that everything that you will, will always be good. However, there are things that we will, we desire, that are not good. Let's say for example, a student who decided to cheat. He wills to cheat. He desires to cheat. Cheating is not good. How can we sort of resolve that? If we try to look at it closely, that person wills not cheating per se, but probably the rewards of cheating. Example, high remark. So a person does not will the cheating itself, but the high remark that you would get from it, which is good. No? Having good grades is good. Now, the reality here is that a person is not free when a person does something that is bad. Because the will is always directed to the good. But the will, if its object is good, then therefore it must have an ultimate object object is good what is its ultimate object the answer there is which is ultimately good so his final goal the final goal of the will is 
what is ultimately good. Now, what is ultimately good? Again, sonum et bonum, the highest good according to St. Thomas of Aquinas. And who is that highest good? And the answer there is the source of goodness itself, and that is God. So our will is directed towards the ultimate good. And these goods that we desire are simply well, ways for us to achieve what is ultimately good. But if these goods that we desire does not lead to our ultimate object, to our ultimate good that is God, then we become unfree. Our will is already distorted or being taken away from what it's supposed to desire. So when a person commits something that is bad, the person is actually not free because he is being taken away from what he must desire. Therefore, freedom is not simply doing what I want. It is doing what is good. There are two levels to authentic human freedom. The first level is freedom from. When we say freedom from, it's to simply be free from any obstacles that might hinder us from accomplishing our goals or to become the person that we're supposed to be. There are several types of impediments or obstacles to one's freedom and we need to be free from these things. The first one is what we call a biological impediment. Biological impediments is usually caused by external substances that will lead to the malfunctioning of internal organs or probably our brain and that will lead to inability to think clearly and to see things through. An example to this is when a person is drunk because he went out with his friends but after after drinking, he realized that he is lonely and decided to text his ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend saying, Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm here. So he simply drunk texting. The texting of that person is not stemming from the person's rationality, but rather because there is too much alcohol in the person's bloodstream. I would give an extra example for this one. A long time ago, I have a friend whose internal organs shut down because he has taken something, too much of something, that he is not allowed to eat. We brought him to the hospital, but then he is already suffering from psychosis because there is so much creatinine in his blood and that creatinine is clouding his brain and he's not actually seeing things as they're supposed to be. So he's calling the doctors and the nurses as aliens. And then he told me, he said, Hey, Ernest, these people, they're aliens and they're trying to abduct me and they're going to bring me to their spaceship and they're going to take out, of my, take out my internal organs. See, because there is an external substance or there is something that he has taken that led to, you know, his uh, organs to shut down and that led to him not seeing things clearly. So it's not really stemming from his freedom. Calling the doctors and the nurses as aliens being rude to them is not something that he really wants, he really desires, or it's not stemming from his rationality. That's why he is calling them aliens. Biological impediments stops us from truly becoming free because it hurts you in a way that you could not anymore think clearly or could not anymore desire what is truly good. The second obstacle to freedom is what they call the psychological impediment. These are interior compulsions usually originating from the unconscious. Or these are heightened emotions that affects our ability, our cognitive function. An example to this is Let's say, a man who saw his girlfriend with another person. And that person easily got angry with what he saw. And he approached his girlfriend, decided to punch the guy, and decided to uh, shout and <clears throat> sort of uh, 
you know, humiliate his girlfriend, not realizing that it's actually her older brother. Now, his actions originates from his anger, his emotion. It stems from his anger, seeing that the person he loves is with another person. Now, look at that closely, that, that situation. <clears throat> and the person did not punch the person or did not punch that other guy because he rationalized it, it did not stem from his will nor his intellect. It stemmed from his anger. Oftentimes, our emotions will hijack our ability to see things through, our ability to rationalize. If you're angry, uh, you immediately react. Or if you're sad, you at times could not see uh, clearly what you're supposed to do. It affects our freedom. So uh, sometimes our psychological state is an impediment or an obstacle to being a free person. The third obstacle to freedom is what we call social pressure. These are various social, political, economic, or cultural obstacles to freedom. I'll give several examples. The first example is when I have a student before picking up STEM and she doesn't want to because she wants to take up humans. However, her parents want her, wants her to become a doctor. And if she will not pursue uh, medicine, her parents will not uh, provide for her education. This is an example of what they call peer pressure or probably parental pressure. Another type of social pressure is economic person could not pursue his or her dreams of probably becoming a doctor because of well, lack of finances. There's a difficulty in finances. Also, a person might not uh, fulfill his or her goals or accomplish his or her goals because of uh, the politics within their community. Uh, for example, a dictatorship might not allow intellectual people to pursue higher education because well the leader does not want to be confronted with intelligent people cultural factors might also include uh, as we look down on women and sometimes i remember a student of mine was not allowed to take up uh, engineering because her father said that is a course for men so these are some examples of social pressure that impedes our ability to pursue the person that we want to be and the person that we're supposed to be. And the second level to authentic human freedom is what we call freedom for. If we are already free from the things that hinders us to become the person we want to be, the second level is to the pursuit of becoming the person that we're supposed to be. Beyond being liberated from all the obstacles to authentic freedom is the freedom for growing as full persons and children of God, sharing in the life of Christ, our Liberator, through His Spirit. It is freedom found in authentic love. Freedom for is striving not only to overcome obstacles, but gradually growing towards becoming children of there are two types of freedom. The first type of freedom is freedom of self-determination. We acknowledge that human beings have the freedom to determine themselves for the present and for the future within the limits and possibilities available to them. We do not have absolute freedom because we are limited physical beings, but we are not completely determined by our limitations. Our freedom is something in between infinity and zero. It is a freedom that acknowledges limits, but also strives to go further whenever possible. One purpose of this freedom is to appropriate actively what happens to us into the persons that we are now and the persons we can become. This freedom allows us to integrate the good and bad experiences of our lives in order to build our character 
and build us to be better and stronger persons. We are not limited by our environment. We are not limited by the people around us. We can choose to become the person that we want to be, despite the limitations that we often encounter. There is this transcendental quality in all of us. We are unlike animals that simply act according to their environment, nor plants grow according to their environment, but we can grow beyond our limitations. Freedom of choice is that level of human freedom where a person exercises his or her ability to choose among a number of options. It is in the exercise of this freedom that a person shapes who he or she wants to become through particular choices. The freedom of self-determination is expressed in the everyday through the exercise of freedom of choice. One becomes through our choices. Our choices makes us who we are. If I truly want to be an Athenian, then I should live out the values of the Athenian. I should be a person for others. So every time I'm confronted with a decision, I should ask myself, will it make me a person for others? Will lying make me a person for others? Will cheating make me a person for others? Is bullying allowing me to become the person that I should be? Let's ask ourselves, because our choices makes us who we are. In conclusion, to be truly free is to do the good and to always strive to be the good person that we're supposed to be. Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye.